Okay, so in this video, we want to use the idea of the comparison theorem to determine whether this improper integral converges or diverges. So first thing, well, are the conditions satisfied? The only real condition was to have a non-negative uh, function. Well, as x is bigger than 1, clearly our denominator is positive. And if you sketch the graph of ln of x, ln is negative from 0 to 1. At 1, it is 0. But then above 1, it is positive. So indeed, we have a non-negative function. Now, our goal here is not to try and find an antiderivative to this expression. This is uh, a very difficult task. And so we're going to try and simplify the function to help us figure out whether, again, this will be finite or infinite. So the first thing is a ln is rather annoying because it really makes this a rather complicated function. So the first question is, well, what could we basically replace ln of x by to make this a little simpler? The idea here is to notice quite clearly that y equals x is a bigger function than y equals ln of x. And so, f of x is at most x over x over x to the 4 plus x plus 3. Right? If I replace my numerator, which is ln of x, by something bigger, x, the whole fraction becomes bigger than the original fraction. So this should be clear. Then, this is still rather complicated. It's a rational function. It is simpler than the original function. But it is not a simple rational function. Well, look at these two terms. x plus 3. As x is larger than 1, x plus 3 is positive. And we could ask, well, what if we drop x plus 3? Well, then we have the fraction x over x to the 4. Well, because this is positive, x to the 4 is smaller than x to the 4 plus x plus 3. But if you keep the numerator the same, and you divide by something smaller than what you initially had, the fraction becomes bigger. And you can easily verify this by cross-multiplying. Multiply by x to the 4, and by x to the 4 plus x plus 3, and you have x to the 4 is less than x to the 4 plus x plus 3. And this, of course, simplifies quite nicely as simply 1 over x cubed. So the original function, f, is at most 1 over x cubed. And this is our g of x. in the comparison theorem. So now let's see. We have, or looking at the integral of f from 1 to infinity, let's look now at the integral of g from 1 to infinity. Let's see what happens. Well again, we will let t approach infinity and integrate from 1 to t, and our g is 1 over x cubed, which, thinking of integration, antiderivative, we will rewrite as x to the negative 3. And of course, now that we have a continuous function over a finite interval, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus, and clearly as t goes to infinity, we get the improper integral. antiderivative by the power rule x to the negative 2 over negative 2 from 1 to t let's simplify first before we plug
plug it in. So if we send this down, we'll have negative 1 over 2 x squared. From 1 to t. So our antiderivative when x is t. Negative 1 over 2t squared minus minus plus the antiderivative at 1. 1 squared is 1, so we'll be left with plus 1 half. Well, as t goes to infinity, 2t squared goes to infinity, and so negative 1 over infinity shrinks to 0, and we're left with 1 half. And now think of what we have now. You say, okay, we have i. Let me rewrite it here. So our initial and proper integral, integral from 1 to infinity of ln of x over x to the 4 plus x plus 3. Now again, because the function is not negative, this is the area of belo below this curve between 1 and infinity. So it's at least 0. But our function was at most 1 over x cubed, and so the integral of f is at most the integral of g. As we have easily shown that the function we're integrating is smaller than 1 over x cubed. And this we have just found to be a convergent improper integral, and it is exactly one half. So look at this on the real line, and you will have a very obvious conclusion. We have an improper integral that lies between zero, as it is clearly non-negative, and is at most one half. So i is somewhere between zero and one half, therefore our conclusion thinking, if you want to make this more concrete, of the geometry, the area below this curve, from 1 to infinity, is less than 1 half. Therefore, it must be finite. Therefore, our improper integral converges. The question of what it converges to is a much more difficult question. We know it's between 0 and 1 half. What's the exact value? We're not even going to go there. And so that's it.